Hey guys, and welcome to Doing Things Dan's Way. So today I have a air filtration system here. This is a jet brand system. And when I press the on button here, the motor just kind of barely bumps. And as you can see, it just kind of barely tries to start. If I press and hold, it kind of tries to move, but it pretty much just flickers. Over on the control panel, you can see as I press the button, uh, the light just kind of flickers. And so there's two possibilities here. One is that there is a, a bad power supply or maybe capacitor on the controller board. The other possibility is that there's a motor start capacitor on the motor of these guys. And so I'm gonna pull this apart uh, today and see which of those two uh, possibilities it is and show you how to do that. So as always, I'm gonna show you every step of the process. I'm not gonna leave anything out uh, and we're gonna just dig in here and see. Now I have plenty of experience with people who are more woodworkers who think electricity is terrifying. So let me tell you, when you unplug this, there's absolutely no power left in it. There's nothing that can hurt you, nothing that can zap you. So don't feel overwhelmed by the fact that this is an electrical problem. Uh, it really is a fairly simple fix uh, either way, and, and you can do this. Okay, tools for this job depend on how far we dig in here. Uh, we're going to need a, a couple of uh, sockets for these six bolts. These simple four screws here, just Phillips. Uh, so a screwdriver, I just like using a, a nut driver. So step one here, I'm going to go ahead and pull off the panel after I disconnect the power. So at this point, it's perfectly safe. Nothing can zap you. I love using one of these um, little magnet holders because it just really makes it easy to keep track of everything that you've taken off. So what we're going to do here is going to slide this guy out. As you can see on the back here, there is a connector for the motor and the connector for power in. So we're going to take this connection and just pull them off. And then down here, we're going to want to take off this this one nut here to get this off. Okay, so now the control panel is completely loose. We can uh, take him out of the way. So what we need here is a 532 uh, standard head to get the uh, these sets of bolts off. Now that whole motor assembly is going to drop, and so I'm going to put my hand in here just to to uh, support it as it comes loose. Now I'll go on the inside and pull the motor assembly out. Okay, now that we have the motor out of the unit, which you can see is there's a capacitor right here bolted to the side of the motor. Now, what this cap is doing is it's helping uh, the motor gets started when the motor is first being applied power. We have 60 cycle uh, AC wave coming into this motor. The motor isn't even spinning yet. So it needs something to phase lead or phase lag the motor to get the thing going. So it's not uncommon that these fail. Uh, another real common place to see these fail is any kind of uh, the squirrel cage fan. So if you think of the furnace in your house, uh, this is a part that will fail on you six, eight, ten years in, uh, suddenly the motor's not spinning anymore. And all it is is a simple capacitor, so you pull it out of the unit, find one online that looks identical with the same specs, and replace it, and you're good to go. So let's pull this off, look at the specs that are on it, and find ourselves an equivalent. So we need a 5 16 head, and we'll just spin that off.
Okay. Let's see what we have here. So we can see is we have the capacitor is 20 UF, that's microfarads, plus 10, minus 5%. It's a 250 volt part, rated for 50 or 60 hertz, and it is good for minus 20 to 60 degrees Celsius. And this was manufactured in November of 2003. So you get an idea of how old this capacitor is, the whole unit will be somewhere in that ballpark. So if we go online, we can find a part that has these same basic specs. So if you look here, you can see I have found a item here on Amazon that has the exact ratings that we're looking for. It's 250 volts, it's 20 microfarads. Uh, the, there's a link in the description below that you can use to find this part, and that'll make sure you get the exact same part that I bought here. And just like that, we have our parts. Thank you, Amazon. Found a cap here, a 20 microfarad cap. 250 volts AC, 50, 60 hertz. It says a max temp of 70 degrees, which is a little higher than the rating over here at 60 degrees C, uh, manufactured of August of 2019. So we should be good to go with this part. It also has UL label, logos and such. So um, this is roughly equivalent. It's a little smaller, um, but shouldn't be a problem. Now what it does not have, and I could not find one like this, is it didn't have this metal clip. Um, this clip looks like it's it's kind of molded into the part. So that's unfortunately going to go away. We'll have to, to zip tie this guy in place. And there's plenty of clearance inside here. Uh, we'll have to, to zip tie him uh, when we're done. So let's, uh, let's get that installed. To install this, we just need to cut off or remove this old one and install a new one. So um, let's get the wiring untucked from behind here. The wires are really, really short. The wire going to the motor it barely gets to this wire nut right here. So my suggestion is going to be to come out here and cut the leads way out here at the ends near this cap, and that will let you uh, install this guy without having to climb in behind all this mess. So just leave these wires kind of where they were, and we're going to cut these off here. I'm just going to strip these guys back. Okay. There's no polarity here, so these can go on either side. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and test this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reconnect these wires to the controller just for my own sake here uh, and make sure that this uh, powers up okay. And the blue wire goes on the outside edge and the black wire is towards the center. Now, if this fixed it, pressing on, we should get this thing to start up right away. If it doesn't fix it, then there's a problem on the control board. So if this is what your problem was, this would have started up just fine. But in this case, this fixed nothing. In fact, unplugging the motor and turning it on gets us that same flickering light, which tells me there's a power supply problem with this board. 
So it's time to pull the circuit board off of this after I remove power. So now that we have the controller out, let's go ahead and remove these three screws here and we will uh, pull the controller off. Start by removing this power connection. Okay, so here's our controller. And what we're looking for here is to see if we have either a, a damaged trace or a burned trace. Um, and I'm not seeing anything on here that looks that way. Look for any other uh, discoloration of things that would um, be a problem. I'm not seeing anything there. What I do see is that this capacitor here, the top of it, the top of this cap here is bulging a little bit. Um, eventually this will get really, really bad, but it could be that this capacitor here has failed. Um, and when they fail, they tend to uh, make that top bulge right there. So look at the, the rating of this part. There we go. You can see this is a 10 volt, 2200 microfarad cap. Okay, so for the sake of experimentation, what I did was I just took a uh, 680 microfarad cap, which I just happened to have um, on my bench, and tacked that on, having removed the 2200 microfarad cap. And what I find is that now it powers right up again, and it sequences through no problem. So that capacitor there truly did fail and did not provide uh, the voltage uh, function that it was supposed to. So all we need to do now is source the proper part for this. And what you'll see here, I found on Amazon, and there's a link in the description below to this exact part. This is the cap that you would need to swap it out. So here's a replacement part. And what I did was I went up a size. In this case, you can see this is a 16 volt, 2200 microfarad cap. And uh, this, you know, you're going up from 10 volts to 16, but you can see it's a fairly substantial increase in diameter, uh, even though the length is just barely a little bit longer. So what I like about this uh, is two things. One, it fits, like it still sits in the same basic spot. Um, it's not taller than, than the LEDs uh, or the buttons up here that have to get pressed. And so it will fit, it'll fit just fine in the package. With this part, replacing it being larger, uh, this will last substantially longer uh, and definitely outlast probably the motor on this unit. So let's get this soldered in. So step one is I need to remove the solder that was on the back here. You can do that either with a, a, a solder pump like this, where you, you press it in, push the button in it sucks the solder up, uh, or you can use something simple like a copper braid, uh, like this. So I'll use the copper braid approach here, so you can get the pad hot, and we're just going to let the, the braid wick the solder up off the part. And all we're trying to do is op open up that uh, hole, so we can get our, uh, our lead in there. And we'll do the same thing on this guy. If you have some flux, let me show you what flux does. Um, you can get flux in the form of a, of a syringe like this, um, or you can get it in the form of a, of a pen, um, where you just push the, uh, it's basically a, a dispenser. Come on. This one's almost gone. So this puts on a very thin film. Um, this is a paste, so I use this in surface mount work as well. So you can deposit a very small amount of paste on there. What it does, it just allows the, the flux to just flow. And so for the sake of getting up inside the braid, uh, it'll make uh, make the solder flow a lot nicer. Now there's, uh, you see in the silk screen here, um, there is a bar and that bar lines up with the bar of the negative terminal on the battery. So I'm gonna just bend the terminals over and then route them down the holes. 
and such. And then on this side, I'll just kind of bend them left and right a little bit just to hold them in place. And get a touch of solder in here. When you solder, you want to heat up the pad, not the leg. You really want to get the... Uh, in fact, I'll start on this side, actually. So we're just letting, letting the heat do its job. This one has a big ground area, so it's, it takes a little bit longer for the heat to flow. Okay, most flexes can be left on the board. You don't have to remove them. Um, if you have a, a flex remover solvent of some sort, that would let you come in here and This just lets you scrub on the board a little bit and leave the board looking nice and bright and shiny and just like new. So now that we have this on, what you'll notice is that there is a fair bit of movement in the cap here. And so what we want to do is put some kind of adhesive between uh, the capacitor and the board. So this could be a shot of glue gun. It could be a little bit of epoxy, it could be some silicone caulk or acrylic caulk, anything non-conductive and sticky that we can use to keep this motion down. Because this whole environment, you know, is it's next to a motor, so there's going to be a little bit of vibration there. And that vibration, theoretically, can cause the uh, this part to, uh, the metal here to actually fatigue and tear off. So you'll see this uh, in other parts as well. Um, like this part here had some underneath it, uh, just to glue it down. Um, the sake of shipping and, and like even these connectors, you can see the little green blobs there and a couple other spots. So they just, like this little crystal is tacked on because those leads are very, very, very fine. So um, this just lets you have vibration without uh, you know having the part fall off. Now this right here, this is the sensor for the infrared and it's fairly floppy on there. I'm a little surprised they didn't put something on that uh, as well. So uh, we're done here. I'm just going to put a, uh, a dot of glue. Um, probably grab the glue gun and just put a shot right there and then this uh, board will be good to go. And we'll go put it back in the unit. Let's go ahead and test that fully. I just unplugged. And now I'm going to install the motor here and now we should be able to see uh, the motor fire up once I plug it back in. And we're good to go. What I've done now as an experiment is I've removed the uh, one lead from the motor cap to simulate what would happen if we had a bad motor uh, capacitor in this unit. So if I turn it on now, you can hear it's just humming. And that would be a symptom of a bad motor cap. Okay, now that we have the cap replaced, we can uh, basically button this all back up again and put it back together and uh, test it out uh, back in the shell.
Bye. I missed the power by one pin. Don't do that. He's on me. Okay, guys, that's about it. I hope this didn't seem too onerous. That if you, uh, you know, you've got that stuttering uh, situation with the motor and the LEDs blinking on you, that tells you that it's the little capacitor on the control board. Uh, if the lights on the control board are fine and the motor is just humming at you, that would be the motor start capacitor. So those are the two different things. Those are the two parts that we replaced today. Uh, you can see by the age of my capacitor, it was worthwhile just to go ahead and replace it. And so now that we have both caps replaced, this unit should be good to go for a long time. It'll go back up in the rafters. So if you like what you saw, I'd love it if you hit subscribe down below. Uh, give me a thumbs up as well. That would be fantastic. And don't forget that there are links in the description down below for the capacitors that I used, as well as a couple of the tools that I used here. Uh, those are paid affiliate links, which means it costs you nothing, but I get a couple cents for each thing that you order after you've clicked on that link. So scroll down after you've hit like and subscribe. Click on one of those links, pop over into Amazon, and buy yourself some parts uh, after you've taken a look at yours to see what it's doing. And if you want to see some more things that I've worked on recently, a couple of videos will pop up here. And of course, hit my face right here to subscribe. That would be awesome. Uh, I appreciate you guys, and as always, be blessed.